So you're thinking about moving to Greenville and you really want to know all the things that you need to know before moving here. Well, here's the top 10 things that I thought were either weird or I wish I'd have known before moving to Greenville, South Carolina, because that probably would have helped answer some questions after I got here. So in this video, I'm going to break down the top 10 things that I thought were weird or a little different after moving to Greenville. So let's get into it. So this is your first time to the channel and you wanna know everything there is about the Greenville area, then make sure you hit subscribe and tap the bell for notifications so you can be the first to know all the new things happening in the upstate. I'm Tracy Roberts with the Atlas Home Team and we'd love to help you make a smooth transition to the upstate. So whether it's a week from now or if it's a year from now, do not hesitate to reach out. All of our information is below and we would love to help you have a smooth transition here. The unique fascination for Duke's fannies is unheard of here. I'm not a Duke's fan. I don't like vinegar. Um, so let me explain why that matters. I love Miracle Whip. I'm from up north. Don't come for me in the comments if you love Duke. I totally understand. We have both bottles in the refrigerator. My husband is a southerner and he loves Duke. I love Miracle Whip so we have to have both. So Duke's has apple cider vinegar in its makeup instead of white vinegar. And another cool thing about it, it has no sugar in Dukes. So it's what gives it its tang, or as Dukes call it, its twang factor. So it has a little bit of a different kick or feel and taste to it. It is also like a yellow color, so that seems kind of odd to me. Again, if you love it, I understand. So you may need a little storyline of how it got created because I love history. So Eugenia Duke, she created this in 1917. She started selling it to the soldiers in a nearby camp with her daughter Martha. They needed to make money for the family and help provide. It got really big. It, so they started telling other soldiers and it started to spread. In 1923, it was so big that they had to start bottling it. And then an, uh, a company out of Richmond ended up purchasing the whole company. And when Martha had gone to California because she was her only daughter, she decided to move to California. Well, one fun fact that a lot of people just walk by downtown that they don't know, because remember we always say that the downtown area wasn't really what it is today. Well, back then and in the 80s and things like that, they were mills and they were factories and things like that in the downtown. This is one of them. It is now Weish Pavilion. It is where the orchestra plays and different concerts are. It's right on the Reedy River, right across the street from Halls, and it's where all the ducks and everything are, and it's a really beautiful place that was refurbished. So it's really cool how history had it that way before to spread through our area, build her family empire, and help our, our, our soldiers, and now it's a beautiful place for us to go. So that's number one. Number two, the walkability of downtown Greenville. It is so beautiful and you get to see different things. There's lots of restaurants and little shops and there's even stores and offices and buildings and businesses that you can check out. It is a longer street, so people would say, is it really that walkable? but it is. So let me explain. If you get tired, there's pedicabs now that you can have a little guy on his little bike and he can ride you around, which is great. Or you can get on the trolley bus. There's different times you can check the app for that. I can put the app in the um, description for you on how to figure out what times and where the stops are for you. Because it comes from all the way at Kilwins um, at the beginning of Main Street that goes all the way down to where um, Gather Greenville is on the West End and Greenville Drive is the baseball team. So you can check out Reedy River, you can go to, heck, the uh, falls, you can do all kinds of stuff over there. Make sure you check out camp while you're there. Camperdown is the place I think I've told you in different videos where there's bowling, there's axe throwing, there's different restaurants in it, and it's a really great place to hang out. So the walkability of downtown Greenville was very different for me. I've never lived in an area that you had so much that you could do in such an a, a easy access area where you could just park and go do what you had to do. Oh, one cool thing I forgot to mention, mice on Main. I know, I'm a dork. I always mention mice on Main, but I think everybody should check it out at least once. The eight little mice, and there's information on how to find a little clues, and you find them. And so to check those out is really fun. So the walkability of downtown Greenville, I thought was really unique, but kind of weird to me at first. Number three, 
The college rivalry is crazy to me. So when you move here from an outside area, if you're not from the South, it is very confusing because pro ball is everything outside the area. You may like college ball, but it's not like it is here. So college ball is dominant here. They like pro ball, but college is everything. So you have Clemson, who is located in Clemson, South Carolina, which is probably 30 to 45 minutes away, depending on where you are in the upstate. Then there is the University of South Carolina that is over near Columbia. And so that's about an hour and a half away. Most people in our area pool, that's how they call it, pool for Clemson. And it's a rivalry that I have not seen, almost like um, University of Michigan and Ohio State. Like they have their own, it's kind of like that. It's a very different way of life on both campuses. They have great education at both schools. All the people are wonderful. Um, I prefer Clemson. Um, they're a great football team. The colors I prefer, I know it sounds like a weird the reason to like a team. Um, and it's a closer venue for you to go to. I will say the fans, they will go at it. So it's kind of nuts to me. I did not even fathom that. Um, pro ball people, if you're thinking about like ways to describe it, it's like how most people feel about the Dallas Cowboys or like the commanders that used to be the Redskins. They used to fight with the Dallas Cowboys. That's basically how the rivalry is. So number three is definitely how college football is everything and pro ball is like, uh, okay, whatever. Number four, cost of living was very shocking to me. I know it's usually less expensive when you live in a smaller area compared to where I've lived in the past, Though it was shocking so many people that have different levels of cost of living that helps them. Like I've made a video about VA and the benefits of living here as a VA. Um, that was pretty awesome. Um, the benefits where you could have, where you don't pay any taxes on the house and then there's a homestead exemption if you've lived in the house for a certain period of time to everybody, as well as there's another homestead exemption. Um, if you're a senior and um, you've lived in your house a certain period of time as well. So there's different things like that. The cost of living in the houses are already 29% lower than the nation, national average, which is cool. Um, gas prices are lower. Even just a gallon of milk is much cheaper here. I thought that was very unique. Um, shockingly great surprise, but I was like, so when does this stop? Is this like a thing that they're doing for a short period of time to help the economy? And it just never did. The, when you buy a car here, the tax that you pay when you buy a car is capped at a flat amount. Um, it's off of a percentage and you pay the different, like that percentage um, percent tax that is capped is only paid on the difference of the car you traded in and the one you're buying. So if you traded in a $50,000 car and you're buying a $30,000 car, you're not gonna pay tax there, which is cool. And then you pay property tax yearly. And in the beginning, it is kind of higher because it gets off of the value of the vehicle, right? Um, and then each year, it's gonna decrease over time. Other areas, you just get whacked right upside the head, right in the beginning, the whole big tax thing. So it's like, in Florida, there's different state tax and then there's a county tax that's different. So it's very confusing, right? Um, it could be as high as seven and 10. In Tennessee, I think it's at 12%. I could be wrong. Um, though, I know it's definitely over 10% for the entire tax up front. So what happens if you sell it? You're not getting any of those taxes back. So I like being able to pay for the property tax for the duration of time I actually own the property. Cost of living also, when you look at that, it's like the restaurants you go to. If you look at what you would pay for just even McDonald's or um, Longhorn Steakhouse or something like that, if you were to eat it here compared to a different area, um, say in Maryland or Virginia or something like that, it's gonna cost you far less for your meal than if you ate in those areas. So cost of living was a big thing for me, um, especially at one point I was a single mom and I wanted to make sure my dollar stretched. This is an area that you can do that and I was pleasantly surprised. Number five, 
that there are major companies here. So being from up north, I'm used to that, like outside of DC and then the Maryland area has lots of major companies. I wasn't expecting that when I moved here. Um, I lived in Jacksonville, Florida as well, and they have major companies, but when you first think South Carolina, you don't think that there's that. There's GE here, there's Michelin, there's Floor Daniel, there's BMW. There is an amazing amount of growth here and there's job opportunities and it's just a really great place that if you wanna come, know you're gonna have a great chance to be able to find a job and the cost of living to match, this is where you love to be. Number six. So I told you I'm not really an outdoorsy person, though when my kids were little, they were. So parks meant a lot to me. We used to call it the playground crawl. You know, most adults call it the bar crawl. Well, when they were younger, I would call it their playground crawl. There's tons of playgrounds here from having the playgrounds that are just set playgrounds like Century Park and, and Greer. Um, and there's other ones like Simpsonville has multiple playgrounds and there's various ones throughout the upstate. The schools here have amazing playgrounds. Oakview Elementary was one of my favorites for playgrounds. It's over in um, the Five Forks area. It has covered shaded areas, especially in their um, younger age bracket playground. So that it's really cool that they could do those things. There's lots of outdoor activities to do with children or even as an adult. We've talked about there's hiking, there's biking, there's um, different trails, there's a swamp rabbit trail, all of those things. There's also rock climbing, um, whether um, you wanna do that indoor or outdoor, you can do that over in Taylor's. I have a video of what to do in Taylor's. It's inside that video. There's lots of things you can do. And I lived in Jacksonville, Florida, and I've lived in Maryland. While they had things to do, it just seemed like it was so far to get to them. And it was a lot to go through and it costs money. So. There's so many free things to do with your children or as an adult here. I was pleasantly surprised of all the outdoor things and all the parks and playgrounds we got to do. Number seven, it's definitely that there's so many things to do. So I didn't think that there was gonna be a bunch to do. And I will be honest, I'm a fuddy-duddy. I'm pretty much a homebody. Though when I want to do something, I'm pretty last minute. There's always something going on and I did not expect that. So there's various places you can find that information. You can go on to different websites in our area. You can put do the hashtag, yeah, that Greenville, and you'll be able to find it on any social uh, network. So there's festivals and there'll be downtown Greenville. There could be in Simpsonville at Heritage Park. They can be in Pickens. They're, they're all over the upstate. It's not just you have to go to the downtown area to be able to do things. There's things like hiking and rock climbing. You can do that on your own. You don't have to have a festival for that. There's several places that you can go to see fireworks and where I'm from, there really wasn't that. Um, there was a couple places and it really isn't like it is here. There, when I say a festival for fireworks, there's rides, there's face painting, there's all the things that you could possibly wanna to do to entertain your children. And there's a smorgasbord, like I, I know that's a funny word, but there's a smorgasbord of food and beers to choose from and all of that kind of stuff. So I definitely enjoyed that. There's three different water parks to choose from in the area. Um, Discovery Island, there's Otter Creek, then there's the one over in Duncan. I just love being here because you can have things to do. At Heritage Park, there are baseball fields, there's batting cages, there's two different playgrounds, there's pavilions you can rent, there's even a train, a steam train for the children to ride on. There isn't a high three uh, like restriction, so you wanna make sure you check that out. It's definitely a great place to go. At Christmas time, the Greer area with all the beautiful lights, it looks like a Hallmark town, and all the shops, and you don't need to just go to Greer during the Christmas time. I have videos on the channel about Greer and all the fun things to do and the historic and the culture and the beauty of that town. You wanna to check those out as well. There's areas like Traveler's Rest that has the farmer's market and the walking trail called the Swamp Rabbit Trail that goes down to Greenville, over to Furman, and eventually will connect to um, Fountain Inn as well as connecting into Bridgeway Station over in Malden. So you wanna check that out. So definitely look at the things to do. Number eight, so the weather. I was pleasantly surprised, but also annoyed at times. So I thought, and I know I'm silly, 
I thought that if I moved to Greenville, we would never have an ice storm. We would never have snow. We would never have anything. Now we do not have an ample amount of snow. We have random ice storms um, throughout the years. Um, we've had a couple that takes you out for three or four days because um, our, our area doesn't have ample amount of snow so they're not really prepared for it as much right we do have salt trucks and they do the best that they can but if they say there's going to be snow the schools are done okay there's not going to be any school you're going virtual now in the beginning before they thought virtual was cool um, and that's what they did the kids just had a snow day and you had to figure it out and you're like but there's only an inch on the ground that was kind of weird to me at first and let me explain why because i had to learn to Greenville is a larger county and it has an area called Traveler's Rest and Traveler's Rest has mountain areas and to keep all children safe and all faculty safe because we're all in the same county and we don't have districts that area needed to not have school so all the other children in the county wouldn't have school too whether we agree or disagree whether it should or shouldn't have districts that's our system and that was kind of unique to me so that weather thing was unique um, I pl was pleasantly surprised to know that winter isn't very long here I absolutely don't really at, uh, let me say this as truthful as possible I hate cold I don't like it so it makes me sick and I know it's again a weird thing so to not have a lot of cold here and if we do it's only for a short period of time it is my love language i would love to live in florida but it's too hot we don't really have that other than like a month or two of the year and there's a lot of things to do inside also that have air conditioning so the weather having four seasons and having a long spring and a long fall was amazing to me so that's something i wish i'd have known earlier because i probably would have moved here much faster Number nine, I like to go do things. I either like to be able to fly when I go somewhere, so the airport being very close. If I wanna to get to the beach, I can get to Charleston in three hours. I can get to Myrtle Beach in four, Hilton Head in four. I like that there's a major highway here. And so there's 85 where you can go north to get um, to either Virginia, North Carolina, and go up to the uh, northeast side of our area. Um, or you can go south into Atlanta and then you can go into um, parts of Tennessee that way. Or you can hop on 26, which is um, where it runs east and west through our state. And you can get to Charleston easily or Asheville. It's a really great location. Most ways to get anywhere are major highways. So we live in Simpsonville. We're going to jump on 385 to 26 to 95 South over to Highway 4. And we're in Orlando pretty quickly in seven hours. To me, that's pretty quickly when you have two children and you're going to go through the airports anyway, and it's going to take just as much time. And the cool thing about that, from here to most destinations, there are a lot of things that you can stop to go see if you need to stretch your legs. Um, it's just great. So also the location, when we talk about that, I like that I'm close to the mountains, whether I wanna go 30 minutes to our local mountains or do I wanna to go to Asheville in an hour and 15 minutes or Gatlinburg is only two and a half to three hours. Charlotte is an hour and a half north and it makes for an ability to have a very diverse lifestyle while still having a great um, cost of living where you are and a quality of life here with all the things that I've already mentioned that you get to do. Number 10, and I save the best for last because I love food. <laughs> so it's a big foodie town. So there's various restaurants that have quality fine dining. And then there's the hole in the wall restaurants you would not think has great food, like Zorba Lounge. Zorba Lounge downtown, Oh my gosh, they have the best sandwiches. You have to try them. They're ample, so you're gonna share them with somebody. The fry size is huge. So you definitely want to get someone to eat it with or you're gonna need to take it with you. There's fine dining like Sobeys or there's Halls or Scoundrel. Scoundrel is phenomenal. They have these um, deviled crab um, inside of the crab shell that's how it's served on ice. It's really beautiful and it tastes so good. It has very little filler. Like there's no breads or anything like that in it. And being from Maryland originally, we're crab connoisseurs. So to be able to eat something like that and to be done well was phenomenal. 
Then you have places like Bobby's Barbecue that's over in Fountain Inn on the border of Fountain Inn and Simpsonville. Um, they're nationally known. They have um, even cool vegan options like jackfruit. They have the huge, we call them Flintstone bone um, ribs. There's so many cool things. They make their sausage there. There's sassafras, there's um, giannas, there's so many great foods that you can try. Passerelles, we ate there yesterday. Passerelles is a downtown restaurant that has a French theme and it's overlooking the falls and it's just a quaint environment. And most of the time right next to you, they're gonna have somebody playing music. It's just, it's a great experience. So I was pleasantly surprised about all the food options. Then there's so many crazy food truck options. I was like, these people don't forget it when it comes to food. It doesn't matter if you wanna get dressed up and go out on the town, or if you just wanna pair, put a pair of flip flops on and a pair of um, khaki shorts and roll out for the summer, you're gonna have a great experience and you're not gonna have a slightest bit of trouble finding the best food for you. So there you have it. The top 10 things that I think are either a little weird, a little unique about Greenville, South Carolina after I moved here. If they're not scary and you're like, hey, no big deal, I think those are cool, and you still wanna move to the area, make sure you reach out to me, Tracy Roberts with the Atlas Home Team. We would be glad to help you make a smooth transition to the upstate. If you want more videos just like this, make sure you click here so you can learn all about Greenville.